that we got your attention. Let the games begin. Game cartridges assembling. We can learn a thing or two from even the most uh, peculiar people. Observe. Hello, revolting slob. Sorry to wake you. I'd like to teach the viewers a few new words, if you don't mind. Okay. Goodness! That certainly gives us some food for thought. You really seem to be enjoying that. Guess the revolting slob finds his earwax to be A. Delectable B. Delinquent or C. Deluded The correct answer is A. Delectable which means delicious I don't think so, but as you can see, there's no accounting for taste Revolting slob, don't put your finger in your ear It might get stuck It's really not a good idea See? Now your finger's stuck. So, viewers, does the revolting slob find himself in a A. Prefabrication B. Predicament or C. Precipitation? The correct answer is B. Predicament, which is a difficult or unpleasant situation. Thank goodness. We thought you might get stuck that way, but it looks like you're okay. All right, everyone. When he removed his finger from his ear, was the finger A, extorted, B, extirpated, or C, extracted? The correct answer is C, extracted, which means removing something, like a finger, from something else, like an ear. Well then, shall we review? Apparently, the revolting slob finds his earwax quite delectable. But when his finger gets stuck, it can be a frightening predicament. Fortunately, he extracted his finger from his ear. Well, that's enough for today. Try these new words out on somebody the next chance you get. See how many friends you keep. Oh, yes. By the way, extirpated means exploded or caused an explosion. No slobs were harmed in the filming of this show. My name's Verity. I bust bad guys. You want to help? Come on in. We got four suspects pinned down. Three of them are guilty. Listen to their stories and spot the mistakes. The ones that lie did the crime. 
Today, we're interviewing the Philadelphia Chamber Orchestra about a robbery yesterday. Good musicians, lousy crooks. Remember, only one of these mugs is telling the truth. The other three are lying. First up, Viola Hardcase. After practice yesterday, I went to the movies. I remember because it was a Steven Spielberg film festival. I saw E.T., Jurassic Park, and Independence Day before my contact lenses melted into my eyes. Ouch! So what do you think? Did Spielberg make all those films? And could anyone sit behind Viola at the movies? Let's move on to Bass Henderson. I wasn't anywhere near here yesterday. I was playing a gig at the Panama Canal. Cool place. That's where boats pass between the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. Yeah. Does the Panama Canal really connect those two oceans? I can't tell if he's playing me like that bass of his. So let's move on to Willow Reed, the clarinet player. I'm innocent, Verity. You've got to believe me. I just got back from an African safari, and I begged two tigers and a rhino. She's tougher than she looks, but are there tigers and rhinos in Africa? That leaves only Fingers Weinstock, the quartet's piano player. I was at my cousin Mickey's wedding yesterday. He married a beautiful Italian woman, Bella. And we sat down to a traditional Italian meal of linguine, fettuccine, and cannelloni. Girl, delicious. Are those all Italian foods? Well, just like I thought. Each criminal all but confessed. Did you spot the mistakes? I remember because it was a Steven Spielberg film festival. I saw E.T., Jurassic Park, and Independence Day. Viola didn't melt her contact lenses. Her brain, maybe. Spielberg didn't make Independence Day. That was some other guy. I was playing a gig at the Panama Canal. Cool place. That's where boats pass between the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. Base here is all wet. The Panama Canal connects the Atlantic with the Pacific, not the Indian Ocean. I was in Africa. I begged two tigers and a rhino. I hate to see a willow weep, but that clarinetist better learn how to play jailhouse rock. That's because there are no tigers in Africa. We ate a traditional Italian meal of linguine, fettuccine, and cannelloni. Fingers might have said a mouthful, but it's all true. Linguine, fettuccine, and cannelloni are all authentic foods from Italy. Me, I prefer American food, like French fries. But instead of numbers, I will show you some pictures. Now here's the part where you come in. You figure out what numbers the pictures stand for and solve the problem. It's that easy. It is for me. Now get ready and stop your fidgeting around. Professor Rocket needs your full attention for Psycho Man. Let's start with the number of musicians in a quartet. Then add to it the number of people on a jury. And then divide it by the size of an octagon. Ooh, that's funny. I thought an octagon was somebody that lived on the planet Octagon. Stop laughing at me! You know what's funny? I'll tell you what's funny. I'm still smarter than you! Okay, now, you got the answer? You take the four people in a quartet. 
add it to the 12 people in a jury. Divided by the eight sides of the octagon, don't you start with me. And the answer is two, two. I knew it all the time. Now, get ready for the next one. The number of pounds in a ton. Please do not drop that on my head. Plus the number of lenses in a monocle. A monocle. That is styling and profile. Then take away the number of noses on your face. How you doing? Are you still breathing? Good. Now, what does it equal? We got 2,000 pounds in a ton, plus one lens and a monocle, minus the one, unless you're one seriously weird looking dude, nose on your face. And the answer is 2,000. 2,000. That is one fat number. Okay, last one. Ah, uh, now don't be running to mama because Professor Rocket gets highly emotional. You take the number of nickels in a 50 cent piece. Then subtract the number of kids in the Brady Bunch. Just the kids. Don't count the parents. And do not count Alice or that all of a kid neither. What was up with him? Plus the number of points in a football touchdown. Let's do it up. Nickels and 50 cent pieces, 10. Minus six kids in the Brady Bunch. Plus six points for a touchdown. Equals 10. 10. I think you're 10 ribbon. You did it. And I know you want more, but I have no more to give. Professor Rocket is only one man. So back off. But don't go too far away, because I'll be back soon. And I'll be looking for you to play some more Psycho Man. Professor Rocket's out. <laughs> it's time to play! Ten seconds! Where you've got to read between the lines and think up the answers before time runs out. So now you know how to play, you're on your own. You got ten seconds. The answer is... Man! On the moon! <laughs> Next one. Did you get it? Waterfall! <laughs> What's next? The answer is... Flat tire! <laughs> you got ten more seconds to get the next one. Did you get it? Good afternoon! <laughs> well, that's it for now, so keep your feet on the ground and your head in the clouds. Until it's once more time to play... Ten seconds! <laughs> Party. 
Good evening and welcome to the haunted house party. <laughs> Sorry, I think I got a cobweb stuck in my throat. Come on in, my little living party crashes and mingle with the dead. I think you might find tonight's mystery guest frightfully smart. See if you can guess who is the guest with the magnificent mind. Excuse me, sir. Do you have the correct time? No, I don't have the time. However, I do have some theories about the space-time continuum. Oh, that really doesn't help me out. Oh, I apologize, miss. I'm just not any good at the cocktail party chit-chat. Oh, I'm sure you are. Just just give it a try. Uh, I'll start. Uh, what do you do for a living? Nothing. I'm dead. I mean, before you were dead. Oh, I get it. Well, I was a physicist. Were you any good? Well, I didn't suck. Uh, see, you're doing great. Uh, now, I noticed you have an accent. Are you German? Well, I was German, but then I became an American. That's interesting. Yes, and when I came to America, I continued to develop the theory of relativity. Uh, you're losing me again. E equals MC squared? Still nothing, huh? Uh, anyway, it eventually led to the quantum theory and nuclear energy. Oh, wait a minute. I know who you are. Wait! You're, You're going to give it all away. Let's give our viewers a chance to guess. Our mystery guest was a physicist who developed many incredible scientific theories, including the theory of relativity. He is, of course... Hello, everybody. I'm Albert Einstein. Well, it looks like he found his time in the haunted house quite hair-raising. <laughs> well, that's all for now. We're out of time. Well, from a scientific standpoint, that is not strictly true. You see... Cool it, big brain. and gentlemen. Hey, hey, hey. I'm talking here. That's better. All right. It's time once again to play Poop or Scoop. Can you tell the straight scoop true from the animal poop false? Test your knowledge of the animal kingdom by separating fact from fiction. Let's start simple. Okay. Poop or Scoop. You can smell a skunk spray from a mile away. Do you believe that? If you think you can smell a skunk from a mile away, go scoop. If you smell a rat, go poop. And the answer is, it's the straight scoop. When threatened, the skunk can squirt its stinky spray more than 15 feet. But the smell travels for a mile in every direction. Okay, here comes the next one. You've heard of flying fish and flying squirrels, but what about flying snakes? Poop or scoop? Some snakes can fly. If you think that's the truth, go scoop. If not, go poop. But uh, close the door first. And the answer is the straight scoop. Flying snakes climb trees and launch themselves into the air in search of food. Once airborne, the snakes flatten out their bodies and make a rapid series of S-shapes to get as much lift as possible. Remember, gang, you gotta spin it to win it. So, poop or scoop? A rat's teeth grow five inches a year. If you think that's the tooth and nothing but the tooth, vote scoop. If not, vote poop. Guess what, gang? It's the straight scoop. Rats' teeth grow all the time, about five inches a year. But rats wear them down just as fast by gnawing on things. That's why their teeth don't look like they grow at all. Get ready for another one. Hope or scope. Ostriches really do bury their heads in the sand. If you agree, vote scope. If you disagree, vote poop. 
Do ostriches really bury their heads in the sand? Not easy, is it? The answer is animal poop. Yes, sorry, pure poop. When ostriches sense danger, they tuck in their heads and necks, raise their tails, and fluff out their feathers. It makes them look like bushes on tall stems, so it gives the impression that they've buried their heads in the ground. Well, kids, that's all we got for you today. If you got only one right, you're a party pooper. Two, and you're a pooper scooper. Three makes you a super pooper scooper. If you got all four questions, you're what else? A super duper pooper scooper. I'm telling you, you can't get this kind of entertainment just anywhere. So please, join us again next time for Poop or Scoop. Hey there, I'm Lens McCracken, ace photo sleuth. I cover the crime beat, even though the local cops asked me to stop. Have a seat, sweetheart. You're just in time to help me figure out the latest batch of photos. Then, when we know what all the snapshots are, I'll solve the crime using my unique talent for deductive reasoning. It was a cold and snowy day. I guess that's why they call it winter. The pond was missing. And that's why I call this case, the case of the missing pond. Check out these photo clues and see what you get. I've zoomed in way too close here, kid. Uh, I really feel like I hit a wall with this photo clue. Can you help me figure out what it is? Yikes, this close-up is downright chilling. In fact, it leaves me in a deep freeze. Got any ideas? This clue has me bristling with bewilderment. Let's figure it out so I can make a clean sweep of this case. Study them all carefully. Well, I give up. This looks like a job for my dependable darkroom computer, the Solutionator. So, here's the first close-up. Did you figure it out? It's a brick wall. Okay, play the next one on me. But we're still at just the tip of the iceberg. Cool, baby, it's ice cubes. Can you feel the excitement? Neither can I. Let's solve the final photo clues and make a clean sweep of it. It's a broom. Ah, I should have known it from the start. Now that we have all the clues, it's time I whisked off my final deduction. The Zamboni driver, you know, that guy that cleans the ice on that tractor thingy at the hockey games? Well, anyway, his Zamboni machine broke down and he had to clean the ice by hand with a broom. Well, it took the poor guy so long, the ice started to melt. He went to the store and bought ice cubes, but it still wasn't enough. The ice was melting too fast and his Zamboni machine was starting to sink into the pond. That's when the Zamboni driver had the brilliant idea to save his Zamboni machine by bricking over the pond. So where is the missing pond? Under the brick floor, of course. Another open and shut case. It's pretty simple, especially when you're a simpleton like me. Lens McCracken, photo snoop. and mysterious recesses of parts unknown, there resides the strange and riddle-wise creature known only as the Riddle Snake. His music is enchanting, and his riddles are perplexing. So look close, and think even closer, closer, closer.
The rhythm is what loses its head every morning but gets it back every night. What loses its head every morning but gets it back every night. Remember, it actually sinks in the west. Try not to make that mistake again. Ciao. It is time for Crash Box Rewind, where we flash back through the show and remind you how smart you really are. Flying snakes climb trees and launch themselves into the air in search of food. Once airborne, the snakes flatten out their bodies and make a rapid series of S-shapes to get as much lift as possible. Our mystery guest was a physicist who developed many incredible scientific theories, including the theory of relativity. Hello, everybody. I'm Albert Einstein. You take the four people in a quartet. Add it to the 12 people in a jury. Divided by the eight sides of the octagon, and the answer is two! Two! I was in Africa. I begged two tigers and a rhino. I hate to see a willow weep, but that clarinetist better learn how to play jailhouse rock. That's because there are no tigers in Africa. Well, that's it for now. See you next time.